Thank you. So this is week 105 of our weekly discussions. We're talking about mental health, EA, and Christianity. And what is EA? Just a quick recap. It's two things. One, it's an idea to maximize the good you can do through your career, through your projects, and your donations. Second, it's a community or a movement of many individuals and organizations all around the world. On this call, I think we have like five or six different countries represented uh, all around the world uh, of people and orgs who care about this idea and, and gather around it. Quick roadmap. Today, we're going to discuss the burden of mental health. We'll talk about how it relates to effective altruism, uh, how Jesus changes things, and we'll close with some discussion questions that we can answer in just small groups. Um, so let's kick off. So what do I mean by mental health? Uh, we're talking here about emotional, psychological, and social well-being influencing cognition uh, and perception and behavior. So it also determines how we handle stress. It determines how we interact in personal relationships and influences our decision making. This is a definition from the CDC. This is more or less the broad definition uh, I'm working with here. So if we look at the world and we look at different kinds of mental health disorders, this is a rough makeup of what we get. This is from our world and data. Um, and they can actually show you how these percentages have changed over time. Uh, so roughly, what is this? One in 25 people uh, globally have some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, anxiety disorder. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how, um, how true the measurement is to the reality here. You can dig into the data and find that yourself. I know in Western countries, uh, it's considered to be uh, even higher than this. But uh, one in 25 people suffer from some kind of anxiety disorder. One in uh, what almost almost 30 people suffer from some kind of depression. Uh, there's also alcohol use disorders and schizophrenia and bipolarism and many other uh, mental health burdens. Uh, and if we look at the world globally, uh, in any given country, there's a pretty sizable minority of people who are wrestling with uh, with one of these issues. And uh, they mentioned here, uh, this is from um, the, a global burden of disease study in 2019, that th there is pretty widespread underdiagnosis of this, uh, that, that we think the real figures are, are probably higher than this. Does effective altruism have a mental health problem? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'd love to learn more about this. There's been a study uh, done, a, a survey, uh, EA mental health survey done in 2019 where they polled about 300 people in effective altruism and asked them uh, a series of questions about prevalence of, of depression uh, and of other uh, mental health uh, disorders. And uh, I, it, it did show that there are, there are serious issues with mental health among effective altruists, but there was some um, selection bias where people who took the survey, uh, we think were perhaps more likely to, um, to have some kind of disorder. And um, it's not the most representative survey of the movement. Uh, so the, the answers, as far as I can tell, aren't perfectly clear. I would encourage you to look into it yourself uh, in this EA forum post, EA Mental Health Survey Results and Analysis. But I think there are maybe reasons why we might expect there to be um, some unique challenges for mental health within the EA community. I know um, prevalence of some um, um, of some social disorders are, are reported to be higher among those who are really active in the EA community. Uh, and there seems to be some connection between uh, these social disorders and some mental health um, struggles. Uh, there's also lots of really challenging tasks that EA's people in effective altruism put out for themselves, whether that's really radical giving uh, or making serious personal life sacrifices uh, to do altruistic things. These are things that, that could uh, have mental health uh, consequences. I'm reminded of a post recently that I read about, um, about um, purchasing bread for oneself and going to the grocery store uh, as an effective altruist, someone who, who wants to save their money and give radically, um, whether it could be justified to buy a more expensive loaf of bread or whether one should buy the, the cheaper loaf of bread and donate the extra money to the poor. Um, I'm reminded of Julia Wise's uh, trade-off in her um, her, her decision, which is described in the book *Strangers Drowning*, where she has uh, she has a candy apple, a caramel apple that she would love to buy, but this is a five-dollar apple, and um, she knows that the joy it would bring her is probably much less than the joy it would bring someone she could uh, instead donate that money to, who's suffering from much worse poverty than than, than she has ever had. 
Um, and these kinds of trade-offs in, 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 in decisions that, that EAs, um, that they, that they embrace uh, could plausibly create more mental health challenges. Uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert, but that just seems like pretty, pretty plausible to me that there are more like challenges, at least. Uh, the question is, where do we go from there? What do we do with that? Um, so yeah, I think the data is kind of unclear on a macro, on a macro picture, but uh, perhaps EA does have unique mental health challenges uh, in the community. But um, yeah, saying it confidently, we can't be clear. Uh, so let's turn now to Jesus and mental health. Uh, I don't think that scripture, faith, and prayer provide mental health benefits, uh, or, or, or sorry, I do think they provide mental health benefits. I don't think they're like a substitute for professional mental health treatment. So if you really are struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts or whatever these are, you know, I, I really encourage you to seek professionals who are trained in, 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 in helping people walk through uh, these mental, um, mental processes and helping, helping people walk through these negative, um, me negative mental habits I do think, though, and I think there's a lot of evidence that shows that having an active prayer life uh, and coming to God with our with our problems and with our burdens and with our worries, that there is tremendous relief and comfort that God gives us through this. And no matter where we are with regards to uh, mental struggles, uh, God is God is a comforter, and God wants to comfort us. Uh, and there is there is relief that we can find in trusting Jesus. So. Uh, this is just a reference to the psychological benefits of prayer. There's lots of studies about this that show that uh, a lot of prayer and mindfulness activities, uh, also gratitude activities, uh, can boost mental health. One thing that my wife and I do is before every meal, we, we don't just pray, but we remind each other um, of things we're thankful for. And I think that is a form of prayer, uh, reminding God um, and really just speaking back to God, um, our, our gratitude and our thankfulness for what we have. Uh, we certainly don't do it enough. Uh, and I'd love to learn from you all and, and the kinds of habits that you've built um, in your lives and your prayer lives to help you uh, have just a stronger relationship with God and also better mental health. But I think prayer uh, in meditation and gratitude uh, record keeping is, is a really helpful one. But when we turn to Jesus himself, uh, we see a picture of somebody who, um, who, who deeply cares for us and who wants us to come to him with our, with our struggles. Jesus says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, I'm also reminded of the Beatitudes where, where Jesus, um, he, he, he preaches um, a message for, especially for those of us who are um, deeply burdened. Uh, for those of us who are deeply downtrodden and those of us who might suffer more so from mental health uh, issues. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. I'd love now to transition to just some uh, open discussion. Um, I'd love to hear just how taking on effective altruism challenges has affected your mental health. Do you think it's been positive or negative? Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here, uh, but I, I would love to hear how uh, effective giving or pursuing a career for social impact or um, the EA community and movement, how that has affected your mental health. I know also in light of the FTX scandal, there's been more talk about, um, about mental health in general. And also um, many people have, <laughs> because of much doom scrolling and, uh, and, 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 and a lot of pessimism or cynicism about recent events um, have found themselves and their mental health a bit negatively affected. I would love to talk about, you know, what have been the best resources for you in improving your own, um, your own mental health? Um, what have been some, some, maybe some mindfulness activities or, um, or prayers that have been really helpful for you? What truths from Christianity have you found most comforting? Uh, and what would you recommend to others as well? and anything else you wanna talk about on this topic. So I know this is a potentially a very sensitive topic and so no pressure to share. Uh, if you, if you again, if you if you are really struggling with something, uh, I really encourage you to, to uh, reach out. Also there's within the EA community professionals to uh, help with this. I know Julia Wise uh, and the community health team uh, are just frequently asked about these kinds of issues and would love to help um, if you need an introduction, I would love to connect you with them and you can reach out to me or 
reach out anonymously on our website. Um, but yeah, uh, we'd love to discuss these things with you here now.